now we're going to talk about what is law enforcement and what exactly do we do. And as you can see from the panel we have up here, there's a really, really wide range of law enforcement agencies that are out there. There's a really wide range of law enforcement professionals. There's a wide range of personalities who do the job. And so we're going to go through one by one and talk about that. What we're going to ask each of our panelists is this. Please describe your agency and the type of service that your specific agency provides. Um, please give us a few typical duties that you perform or that your agency provides. Give us, if you can, an example of something unusual that people might not expect that you do. And then tell us about yourselves personally. Okay. So I'll start with myself. My name's Dave Kolb. I'm the police chief at the Champlin Police Department. Champlin is a suburban law enforcement agency that, that serves the city of Champlin. Um, our department provides 911 response, traffic enforcement, criminal investigations. My personal duties are I sit in the corner office at the police department behind a desk most days. That is the most exciting job at our police department. And I work on the budget. I'm primarily responsible for that, both to budget what we need and to make sure we're staying within the budget. I'm responsible to make sure that our policies and practices are current and legal. And I'm responsible to be essentially the liaison with the city administration and the city council to make sure that the police department is providing the service that they want. And of course, I have to balance that with what the law demands. So. Um, that's my job. I've had the fortune in my career of doing a lot of the duties that you're going to hear described up here. Not all of them, um, but let's get started. So our first panelist is a, uh, what we refer to as a trooper. We've got our own language sometimes, um, and he'll describe his agency, but we refer to him as a trooper or a highway trooper. So I was hoping you're going to wear the hat. No, you don't have to. That's OK. All right, fine. There. It looks good. All right. Feel better now? Sure. Uh, my name is Tyler Uthi. I'm a state trooper with the Minnesota State Patrol. Uh, just a little bit of background about me. I was born in a suburb of Seoul, South Korea, was adopted at a young age and brought over to the great state of Minnesota. Uh, graduated high school in 2007 in Forest Lake and attended multiple different universities, uh, U of M, Metro State, and uh, Minnesota State Mankato. Uh, some of the typical duties of a state trooper, whether it's in this state or any other, is generally speaking, we're a traffic law enforcement agency. So most of the time that you see us, we're driving around on the state highways, U.S. highways, and then the interstate freeway system. A uh, couple of the typical duties that we have, uh, perform in any given day is we make traffic stops, whether those results in uh, warnings, issuing citations, or making arrests for, you know, really anything, whether it's a warrant. Uh, drug arrest, uh, impaired drivers. Uh, another big duty that we perform uh, on a regular basis is writing crashes that occur on these highways. And we also do a lot of motorist assist. We stop and check on stalled vehicles. We help people change flat tires. We help get them to the gas station to get gas when they run out of fuel. Uh, one, of the, one duty that we perform that isn't widely known is we do, and maybe some people know about it more now uh, with the Fox 9 story that was on this week, is we do a lot of emergency blood runs or organ trans uh, transfers. So if there's a hospital that has a patient that's been seriously injured, you know, whether it's, you know, a victim of a crime or a victim of a crash, if that hospital doesn't have the blood uh, or the human organs that they need, but another hospital does, they rely on the state patrol to make those uh, emergency runs where we'll pick it up at one hospital and bring it to another. Uh, some things that I do in my personal time, we built a new house, so I've been, my, house, my time has pretty much been monopolized with working on finishing basement, building a deck, putting a fence up. I'm just a re regular person when I'm, when I'm not in the uniform, so just do that type of stuff. I like to go out with our friends and family members. We go out to dinner. We like to go to movies. And then I have two dogs at home. I have a husky and a golden retriever that take up a lot of my time, too. All right. Thanks, Tyler. Sheriff's Deputy. Uh, my name is Deputy Anthony Body. I work for Ramsey County Sheriff's Office. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in East St. Paul. Uh, graduated from St. Paul Central in 2001. 
Um, I, too, bounced around from a lot of universities trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, ended up going to Minneapolis Community and Tech, and then going to Hennepin Tech for skills. Uh, Ramsey County is about 3,300 square miles. Um, it's a very densely populated county. Um, Ramsey County Sheriff's Office, mainly what we do is court security. Um, we're responsible for um, judges and their security, their courtroom. We're responsible for maintaining and operating the jail 24 hours a day. Um, and then we also provide uh, patrol police services to seven contract cities that are in our northern suburbs. And then we also offer um, AOAs, which is assisting other agencies to Maplewood, Roseville, and sometimes St. Paul. Um, my current assignment, um, a lot of county agencies don't do this, but I'm a SRO, which is a school resource officer, um, which you guys probably have one of the, the Champlin officers here in this school. Um, and my job is basically to provide police services within the school and deal with criminal matters within the school. Um, in my personal life, I too have dogs. Um, I love any team playing the Packers. Uh, um, Did I'm, you I'm, say Packers? Yeah. The I'm Green not, Bay Packers? Not, not a big fan of uh, Green Bay Packers. Oh. Uh, Vikings ticket, season ticket holder, so I love football. I love, I love Minnesota. I love all Minnesota sports. Um, and that's it about me. Wonderful. Thanks, Tony. Okay. Our next category is, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to jump to, to Jason. I'm sorry. Oh, good. Yeah. Keep Jason, you want to? Jason's got a, a friend with him who's a little antsy, so we kept him off stage till. <clears throat> so he's probably going to whine. He's probably going to bark, so I apologize for the, uh, the loud uh, hurting through your ears. Uh, I'm Jason Buck. I'm uh, employed with the city of Brooklyn Park. I'm a police officer. I've been there for 15 years now. This is my canine partner, Bongo. He's my second dog. I uh, ran my first dog, Diesel, for about eight years. Um, typical duties, uh, we assist any agency that would request us to assist on narcotic sniffs. So Bongo is, and I are trained for dual purpose uh, canine, which is narcotics and patrol. Uh, the patrol aspects are tracking, apprehension, um, locating evidence that someone may, uh, may throw in an area that we need the dog to help find. And we assist any agency that would, that would call us to, uh, to assist with that. Um, typical duty is, uh, again, the tracking. The, uh, the tracking and the, and the narcotics work is the biggest thing that we do. It's a lot of fun. It's very rewarding. It's very cool to have a dog in your car. You always have somebody to talk to, which is nice. Uh, unusual duty. I guess the biggest thing would be is uh, picking up after what a dog leaves behind, especially in a building when uh, they've worked a long time and they haven't had to empty a little bit uh, for a while, uh, if you get what I'm putting down. Um, but other than that, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. We train them a lot. We spend a lot of time with them. Uh, I think the, probably the coolest, one of the two, or two coolest things would be helicopter pilot and horse patrol besides a dog. But other than that, those three would be the best things I could possibly, probably do. So uh, as far as me, I love dog training. I love spending time outside, I love spending time with my family, and that's about it. Thank you. So in your assignment, the, the professional goes right into the personal because he lives with you. And yes, comes home with me every night, so he is part of the family, and I am responsible for him 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and end up spending more time with him than I do my own family. But, again, I would do it in a heartbeat. It's the best job in the world, so I get to have a friend that I take to work every single day, so, and he protects me and, and everybody else here on this panel, so. So does the dog take Quiet. does the dog take on the handler's personality or does the handler take on the dog's personality? Han the dog usually takes on the handler's personality. I don't think I'm this high strung, but apparently I am. Because I can see the similarities. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for, Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Okay. Now let's talk about narcotics enforcement. <clears throat> Uh, good morning. Um, my, name, my name is Stan Petrie. I'm a special agent with DEA here in the uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul District Office. And, um, and DEA is Drug Enforcement? The Drug Enforcement Police? Administration, yeah. So it's the uh, United States government's um, narcotics agent as listed up by there. So I need to apologize in advance. I didn't have any real neat slides to uh, forward to the chief. So um, a little bit about me. I went to the University of Wisconsin and... Um, got degrees in criminal justice and psychology, and um, 
and then a minor in Spanish, which served me well. Actually, uh, in my law enforcement career, I was a police officer in the Madison area for uh, eight years, which was uh, many of the duties that uh, gentlemen and women on this panel um, perform every day. So uh, patrol, investigations, school resource officer. And then after eight years uh, down in Madison, I took the job with DEA. Uh, for the last eight years, so six and a half years of my career with DEA has been on the southwest border, actually in Texas, the U.S.-Mexico border, where I worked uh, predominantly uh, transportation groups, so large-scale smuggling, um, bulk marijuana, cocaine, methamphetamine, uh, anything that was, you know, controlled substances that was coming in through the southwest border there. Um, I've been in the Minneapolis area for a little less than a year, um, just recently transferred up here, and um, so now I'm working... Uh, in our world, we call it either you know transportation or destination city. Now I'm working destination city, so where the drugs are actually getting distributed, you know, in a personal level out on the streets. That's what that's predominantly what we're working uh, up in the Minneapolis area. Um, typical duties can go, uh, you know, any any day-to-day -day duty for me can be um, sitting at my desk and knocking out reports, much like the uniform officers here do. Um, which uh, paperwork is, of course, a very important role in law enforcement to document what we do and to justify the uh, search warrants and um, all the materials that we need to present in court eventually to get convictions on the targets that we're investigating. Um, we also do a lot of surveillance out on the street, um, so which is this is really what I wear to work every day, which is pretty nice. I was told I should kind of shave, so I'm we're, I'm pretty unkept for. The, uh, as compared to the professionals that sit here. So I'm supposed to blend in and look uh, fairly normal. So if I look like I shop at REI and I, and I uh, am wandering around in not something other than flannel, then, then I'm doing a good job. But um, we're supposed to you know, just look like the everyday average, 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 everyday average person, and, and that's what we try to do. Um, but we can go from surveillance, um, you know, from, a, from our desk to the surveillance to um, you know, actually executing search warrants. Um, and that can happen in a matter of a couple hours. Um, so my, my um, vehicle is usually got all my equipment, much like the uh, SWAT gentleman who will talk to you later. Uh, we'll, we'll go from uh, watching surveillance, drug deals, that type of thing, locate a stash location, and then we'll be going and uh, executing that search warrant um, you know, an hour or two later after that, after we've passed it through a judge. So um, those are the kind of the typical duties that we have. Um, something that's atypical or, or maybe you didn't know about DEA is uh, we have more offices worldwide than any other government, U.S. government agency with the exception of State Department. I think it's over 60 offices worldwide. So we have, uh, we're in all over South America, Europe, Middle East. Uh, we have offices in Kabul, um, Beijing, I mean, you name it, we, we probably have an office there. So we work with the international commun policing communities um, and the governments in those, in those cities, in those countries, and uh, because much of you know, the consumption of drugs obviously happens here in the United States, and um, so it allows us to work with foreign governments a lot, so there's a lot of foreign travel opportunities with uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration. Um, personally, uh, I have a family here, um, I also have a dog, um, boxer that um, was a southwest dog and is now acclimating to a Minnesota winter, which is which has been tough on her. But uh, that's uh, you know spending time with my family and and uh, trying to keep that dog in line occupies a lot of my personal time. Okay, so if you like to travel or like adventure, or like to move around anywhere potentially in the world, DEA. Okay, great, thanks. All right, I got to tell the story about this one before Pam starts speaking. Okay. So. I wanted to have on the panel, you can stand up, Pam, I'm going to embarrass you. I want to have on the panel somebody from a big city, a cop from a big city. Um, and if you're not familiar with Minnesota, St. Paul is our state capital. It's a, you know, relatively for us, it's a fairly large city. Because I thought, oh, big city cop, they'll be rough and tough, and they'll have some really cool stories to tell. And so I said, <laughs> so I are. said, so send me a picture, Pam. So I'm thinking I'm going to see this really rough and tumble action shot, and, I, and she sends me this. <laughs> and... And so I emailed her, I said, Pam, that's not the stereotype I wanted. I wanted the rough, and she said, well, what exactly do you mean by that? And of course I realized, all right, that's kind of dumb on my part. She's a person like anyone else, works for a specific agency. Um, so we went with this, and Pam will tell us about bigger city maybe than what we've talked about so far. 
Sure, thank you, Chief. My name is Pamela Berrigan. I am a sergeant with the city of St. Paul. I've been in St. Paul for 18 years. I don't know if you notice a little accent, but I was born and raised in Ecuador. So I've been here for 25 years. This is my second career. I graduated with a communications degree before I moved here, and then I went back to school and got my law enforcement degree. Um, so personally, law enforcement is a calling. I never thought I was gonna be a police officer. Culturally, as a female, and I know that's in another, other cultures also, you are not supposed to be doing this kind of work. Now, that's more for the guys. But um, I'm here to let you know that, you know, you can do anything you want. Um, tr truly, being a police officer is a calling. In my personal life, I love to travel. I like to eat. I like to experience different cultures, different people. I like to learn a lot from other, other people because that's the only way you're going to grow up. And then the city of the St. Paul, we are the second largest city in the state. We have about 600 officers, sworn officers. We have a variety of units that you can apply for. So if you're a patrol officer in our, de in our department, you can be a canine officer, a mounted officer, a bike officer, SRO, you can work in a cottage, you can work in the force unit, we can work in family violence. So there's a variety of different skills that you can collect and you can develop if you wanna be in a bigger city. As you uh, test in and you get promoted, there's also a lot of varieties of things that you can do. I've been a sergeant for 10 years. I have five assignments already, starting with the juvenile unit, the gang unit, domestic abuse, training, a backgrounds unit, and currently uh, in the gang unit, and I'm currently in the community engagement unit. So one of the things that is with the big city, which is different from some of the smaller departments, is one, um, the thing is that advantage, you get a variety and a diversity of people that you work with, and that's what I show that picture, because we are really out in the community. We are trying to figure out what is that we need to do to move to the next step. Uh, my department is very if, if, uh, a forward thinker, so we are now want to wait until we figure out what, what's going on. We want to be out there trying to be proactive, trying to develop different areas, develop different programs for the community so we can continue bridging the gap between the community and law enforcement. Um, Another of the challenging careers or the challenging assignments that I had, I work in the gang unit, so I did a lot of the, you know, we work closely with the SWAT team, we did a lot of entries, we did a lot of gang houses. Um, another assignment that I had is in this uh, family violence unit. I was a sexual, criminal sexual investigator and also child abuse investigator. So personally, those are the two most challenging um, assignments that I had in a career level and also in a personal level. I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next uh, speaker, I, I have him down as Bike Patrol. I'll just tell you a little bit about him. Andy started with the Champlin Police Department a few years ago. Um, bike Patrol is one of his assignments. He was just recently promoted to investigator, so he's learning how to investigate cases, and I don't know if you want to talk about that, but um, this is a picture of Andy in his off time making beer. You'd think if a guy promoted him to investigator, he'd at least get a bottle of beer out of it, but it hasn't happened yet. But you want to tell us about bike patrol yeah. and anything else you? So can? with bike patrol, um, in uh, bigger departments and in many departments, it's often a like a full-time assignment or an assignment that you devote most of your your time to. In a place like Champlin, uh, first of all, it's seasonally regulated. We only have a couple months where we can realistically do it. Um, but even then, uh, for our department, just with our size, it's something that's an overtime gig. And so, you know, outside of my normal work hours during the summer, uh, bike patrol is one of those things I do, which is a lot of fun because number one, you can ride around, in this case, our entire city and go pretty much wherever you want. A lot of our duties are kind of regulated to um, more of those soft skills, actually, where it's just your, your, kind of establishing yourself in the community, you're, you're waving to people, you're handing out stickers to the kids, you're stopping, you're chatting with the neighbors. A lot of those things that don't typically happen or maybe don't happen enough with patrol cars because they got to take calls, you know, they're, you know, they're responding to, uh, to traffic uh, issues. So they have things that they constantly get called to. With bike patrol, not so much. You can go off into the, uh, to the neighborhood and if, Kids are running around or playing basketball. You can stop. You can chat with them. You can kind of, 
you know, facilitate a relationship there, which, you know, in the long run is good because, you know, you know, if and when you run into those people again, they know you, they're comfortable with you. It's, uh, it really helps with, you know, getting a story from them later or just kind of making sure that, um, that interactions between, you know, you and those community members are, are healthy and strong. Um, now, one thing that a lot of people don't realize you can do with bike patrol, which, you know, comes with, with middling success in some cases, you can stop cars on a bicycle. And in fact, there's somebody in this room who has managed to stop cars on Highway 169 with a bicycle. Um, I wouldn't recommend that, but it has been done. Um, so that's one thing that uh, you can kind of keep in your back pocket. Um, this is me. This is a Belgian ale that a friend and I made, a five-gallon batch. We added about a pound of honey, and it pasteurized really well. It was really great. Um, so that's one of the things I like to do uh, in my off time, that and watch the Packers. So. Pa Packers, really? We've got to get into that. Huh? Yep. Okay, our next couple speakers may be competing for who's got the most toys, or at least the coolest toys. Um, Chopper Pilot. Hello, Trooper Mark Tozzola, State Patrol. A uh, little about my background. I uh, have a bachelor's degree in uh, industrial technology and management from Bemidji State University after graduating from Crosby Arrington High School. And then I served in the Air Force as a B-52 backseater for a little over seven years. Uh, before getting out and coming to Metropolitan State University so I could get this job. Uh, my trooper partner described uh, our road duties, uh, so I'm not going to go into that. All troopers start out on the road. I worked the road for nine years, and then I was an investigator for five years before coming to the flight section. Uh, a little bit about the flight section. There's eight pilots statewide. We have two bases <clears throat> covering the whole state. All our pilots are dual rated in both the helicopter and uh, fixed wing. Fixed wing activities, uh, Traffic enforcement, supporting both our troopers and our allied agencies. Uh, uh, in that respect, we do personnel transports and emergency transports, uh, as the trooper described earlier. Uh, helicopters, we do search and rescue. Uh, one of the more unusual things we do, uh, probably not much known about, is assist the Secret Service with executive protection. President, vice president comes, we'll provide air support for that. Uh, what I like to do in my off time, I'm, I've been married almost 30 years, three daughters and a female German Shepherd, very spoiled. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time chasing them around uh, in my off time. Not sure what else you want. To Are you going to give us a ride today or no? No, actually, uh, I was going to bring the helicopter, but the engine's in maintenance down in Texas, so sorry about that. Okay, thanks. You know, why don't we, instead of having them walk this far, we can just have you guys where you are to stand up and... So our next speaker, um, you, you know, depending where you are, you may refer to what, what Tim does as a game warden or something, but... Yes. Okay, well, I'm Tim Moss. I'm with the DNR, um, Department of Natural Resources. We're known as conservation officers is what they call us now, but a lot of people call us game wardens. So some game wardens out in the field may still refer to themselves as that as they walk up and make contact with you. Uh, I did not know I wanted to get into law enforcement. When I first started out, I was actually in college taking biology and chemistry classes when a friend of mine, he, he gave me the advice to join a reserve program, which I did. And I joined the reserves and after that I ended up getting hired as a police officer. I was a police officer for 16 years, was always interested in the DNR, just never took the initiative to apply. Uh, I finally got up the courage to apply, I got hired with the DNR and it's a fantastic job. It's a fantastic um, agency to work for. Uh, there's approximately 250 conservation officers within the DNR Division of Enforcement. Um, we cover, each officer covers about 600 square miles, and that's your assigned patrol area, and you're the only person there covering that area. But you do have partners. We rely on these guys for assistance and gals whenever we need help if we're out in the field. Um, typical duties, what we do, it, it changes season to season. Uh, like the chief said, we get a lot of equipment. I'm assigned, I have three different boats that I have, one for the river, uh, one for a lake, one for different marshlands. Uh, I have an ATV and a snowmobile and a take-home squad, which is a pickup truck, in order to haul all of our equipment. Summertime, we spend most of our time um, in our boat. My boat will be connected to my truck all, all summer long, so we'll stop on lakes. We're working on um, checking anglers and doing boat and water safety things. Um, that'll roll into the fall, which is obviously hunting season. So deer hunting is obviously our biggest one, but we have waterfall hunting, small game hunting. Um, and with the deer hunting season, 
uh, we'll spend a lot of time, we have an aviation unit, um, and they'll actually give us a lot of assistance. Uh, they'll go out if you need people to look for things such as bait or deer stands or things like that. Spend a lot of time on foot, out in the woods, uh, on ATVs. Um, if you don't see us, it doesn't mean we're not there. Um, we're out in the woods a lot. Um, winter time will come around and then you're gonna spend a lot of time snowmobiling on the ice, obviously checking ice fishermen, checking ice shacks, things like that. You'll use your snowmobile, your ATV, depending on snow conditions. Um, we also do a lot of public speaking engagements. We do a lot of um, classes. We teach all the firearm safety classes. We teach ATV safety classes. We teach boat and water safety classes. Um, you're interacting with the public. Our biggest thing, there's so few of us in the state that education, so we're big on education, we're big on getting out, we're big on meeting people, because out in the field, a lot of our work, we don't meet a lot of people because a lot of it we're doing behind the scenes where people don't see us. Uh, something not typical that you might realize that we do, we do, we office out of our house, just like the other troopers do, we do all of our own investigations. Um, so if we have an animal or a deer that we need to investigate and determine who shot it, how it was killed, we're the ones that will actually do the necropsy. Um, we'll actually take the animal, um, a lot of times to our house or to a wildlife office, and, and we'll actually do the dissecting and find the bullet, bring it out. We'll haul the animal to the vet offices if we need to get an x-ray to determine where the bullet is to help us locate it better. Uh, we can determine um, body temperatures, things like that. So it's, it's very interesting. Um, you're, you're charged with a lot of responsibility uh, because you're out of your home office and you have such a big area. Um, something personal about myself, obviously I enjoy the outdoors, that's why I became a conservation officer, so I spent a lot of time, I hunt fish, I ATV, snowmobile. Uh, my family and my wife and my 13 year old son are avid fishermen, so we spend most of our time out in our boat doing that. So let's talk about your pictures, because you sent some cool ones. You're yeah. on the boat, is that Duluth? Yes, that's up at Duluth, I don't know if everybody knows about the Tall Ship Festival that comes about every three years. So we're actually, we have a marine unit within the DNR, DNR enforcement, and they're charged with working with the Coast Guard to maintain safety and maintain the distances around all of the um, ships that come in for that, uh, basically it's a parade. Has anybody gone up there and seen it? it it's pretty phenomenal. And we got, I got a first hand view, we were right next to all the ships, it, it, was, it was fantastic. And I don't know how many boats were on the water, we, ne we never counted, but there was hundreds of boats out there. Um, that's your ATVing. ATVing, uh, that was actually, that day we were up north, I was working in two harbors. One of the other benefits of this job is you get to travel throughout the state. We're state conservation officers, so we go all over. I was up there working and we ended up getting a call of a wolf that was caught in a trap that we had to go assist in releasing. So I was able to do that. So if you like being outdoors, and you oh. like mosquitoes, and you like freezing, you're outdoors a lot, You're it. but they give you the equipment so the bugs aren't an issue. Okay, So, thanks Tim. Okay, our next category is something we call, tra we call transit cops. I think the picture I got here is from Washington DC in the subway, but Tony, you can tell us about the Twin Cities. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Anthony Hines. I'm a lieutenant with Metro Transit Police Department. I've been in law enforcement since 1992. Uh, forgive my voice, I'm recovering. I only did it for you, Chief. Uh, uh, lots of things that you don't know about transit. We have our own bike uh, unit. We have a K-9 unit. We have officers that are a part of the uh, multi-jurisdictional SWAT team. Uh, we do our, all of our own investigations except homicides and, and things of that nature. We go everywhere you see a transit bus. So that's all the way to Sherbin County, or all the way down in Dakota County. Uh, wherever you see that bus, uh, you're you more than likely to see a transit officer. Uh, a typical day for me is assigning work, uh, assigning overtime to officers, uh, making sure the, the objectives for the department are met, and, and making sure our guys have fun. Uh, if you love people, then law enforcement is for you. It's a great opportunity, it's a noble profession. Uh, you have ability to make a positive change or those people that you have contact with. And, and on your off time, uh, I advise you to keep your outside friends. Don't be so involved in law enforcement that you only wanna uh, 
be friends with individuals that are police officers. If you had friends before you joined the profession, keep those friends, especially if they're good friends. Uh, things that I like to do on my off time, especially it, having time with my family, uh, making sure my son stays on track. He's uh, just been accepted to Michigan State. Uh, I have another son that's being quartered by uh, Marquette in Wisconsin. Uh, it, and law enforcement has done that for me. Uh, it's a very uh, uh, interesting profession. It, it keeps you on track in, in ways of uh, organizing your life, uh, making sure things go according to plan. You, you try to plan, you know, uh, along with the schedule that you get when you're working. Uh, few things that people do not know about transit, and, and I try to tell everyone this, and, and especially for the panel, audio on any Metro Transit bus or, or property goes in a range of about 30 feet. And video, of course, goes as far as it can see you. All right? Thank so you. The, you, the, the buses and the trains have video systems on them, don't they? We have been the go-to agency. <laughs> For, for all things uh, considered that they've ridden public transportation. Okay. And, and, and technology, as you know, has gotten uh, uh, real uh, advanced. Yeah. And, and pictures and, and audio are So a crime out. on a bus or a train, you've probably got some video of some kind. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a 98% closure rate for anything wow. that's committed on a train or bus. And transit... Departments are fairly common. I'm thinking maybe bigger cities more because we're going to have people watching these videos from all over the country. And I uh, yes, and, and speaking of of DC, we have, we've gone out there twice now for the inaugural, uh, and the guys have been uh, real blessed with having that opportunity cool. to go out there and help out. Okay, thanks, right. Tony. Um, let's go ahead and hand it down. Uh, SWAT. Now I told Trevor you should wear your your gas mask and your helmet and all your stuff and. Of course, he opted for the gun, but go ahead. It's too much gear. Uh, I'm Trevor Armbruster. I'm a patrol officer with the city of Champlin. Um, my regular duties are just patrolling the city, uh, what the chief has been telling you about. But part of being with the city of Champlin is we have a spot on the Hennepin County Weapons of Mass Destruction Tactical Team. Um, being part of that team, we respond to um, any incidents that may have chemical or biological or nuclear um, issues, uh, such as terrorist incidents or uh, search warrants that would include any of those things. Um, I guess one of the more interesting things that we do get to do or that not, not most people know about is when the president comes to town or uh, any other um, high-ranking politicians, we get to be involved in the security uh, process of that. And we also get to do the Super Bowl that's coming up this next year. Um, in my personal time, I like to uh, travel the country and compete in three-gun competitions. So I spend most of my time doing that. And I also have a dog that's just a mutt that's mixed with everything. So. Three gun competition. That's a shooting competition, right? Yep, shooting competition. Trevor's real into shooting. I like to shoot. <laughs> Great. OK, thank you. <clears throat> this one I found some cool pictures of water patrol. So maybe you can even enlighten us about so what, what sure we're seeing. What yeah. that, uh, represents. But I'm uh, Deputy Jeremy Gunya from Hennepin County Sheriff's Water Patrol. Uh, that's my primary duty. I'm assigned to Water Patrol full-time. We have eight full-time deputies. Uh, we have 103 named lakes in Hennepin County that we're responsible for and three major rivers. Um, I won't get into the Sheriff's Office uh, aspect of it just because uh, Ramsey County Deputy Anthony uh, did that for us. Uh, but specific to Water Patrol, uh, mainly boat and water safety is our uh, main objective. So. We do all enforcement on the waterways of Hennepin County. So my patrol squad is going to be a boat. Um, we have suburbans that we tow boats, airboats, very seasonal. So depending on the season is what we're going to be hauling. We always have something with us. We're going to be more uh, focused on search and rescue. So we train ice rescue, swift water rescue. Um, we have an underwater recovery team. And... Uh, yeah, so uh, we do a lot of river patrols um, and uh, look for missing persons. One interesting thing that we just recently added uh, that's unusual is we have a UAV team now. So 
Uh, we use drones um, to do searches, which is uh, alleviate some of the manpower that uh, is used for uh, searches. So that's kind of a new thing that we just recently added to our program. So personally, um, I have three kids. I like to volunteer my time. I do a lot of uh, coaching. Uh, kids are in baseball, basketball, stuff like that. Uh, enjoy the outdoors, do a lot of uh, hunting and fishing, so get out on the water as well as in my, uh, my career as well as on my own time. So um, that's about it. Great. Thank you. Yep. Okay, this one's unusual. Mounted horse patrol. We don't see a lot of that. But no, you don't. <laughs> and you didn't ride him in here. I didn't. I was afraid he'd make a mess. Okay. And nobody needs to watch me clean that up right now <laughs> on stage. Um, my name's Jen. I work for the city of St. Paul. Uh, I've been there for seven years. And uh, this is my fourth year now in the mounted unit. Um, I, just a little short background on me. I never thought I wanted to be a cop. I got into a job shadowing program in high school and initially I thought I wanted to be a vet. After I watched a kitten get the clawed, decided I couldn't do that. Thought I might want to be a teacher, and then after seeing that I can't discipline kids that aren't mine, decided I couldn't do that. And all the cool kids were doing ride-alongs, so I did one of those, and I was like, oh, this is so much fun. I don't have to sit at a desk. I get to be outside. I get to help people, meet people. So um, as long as I've been doing this, I don't really think I've worked a day in my life still. I absolutely love it. So this in our state, we only have three mounted patrol units, Minneapolis, us, and Duluth, so it's a very small thing. Um, it's something you're interested in. You have to be, you have to know what that department has to offer you. We can't just go to any police department to do that. Um, you also don't have to have experience to ride a horse. Um, we put, our department puts you through a 10-week riding school, and um, the first half of, first half of it is learning how to ride a horse, and the second part of it is intertwining your police skills on the back of your horse. Um, uh, personal stuff, unusual um, duties? Duties, uh, so my primary job uh, responsibility is my horse. Um, I do not take him home like the dog. Uh, the city would not pay for a barn or a stall outside of my apartment. Um, so he goes home at the end of my shift. I start starting in my shift at our barn. Um, but I'm responsible for cleaning him, for noticing if he has any injuries, any health issues. Um, my horse in particular does have allergies, so he gets allergy shots half the year. Um, uh, horse training, you're responsible for training your horse on a regular basis. Um, we ride all year round, and that's because horses are a use it or lose it time to type of animal. So you teach them something, or you train them something, and if they don't see it for a certain amount of time, the next time they see it, they will freak out as if they've never seen it or dealt with it before. So that's the main reason why, why we ride all year round. Doesn't matter if it's 10 degrees outside or 90 degrees outside. That's a big part of my day is training my horse and um, uh, making sure that, I, that he's squared away so that I can do my job as a police officer on him. Um, when we are on the street on patrol, we do a lot of public relations type stuff. Um, so yes, we do stop cars. Um, we can arrest people. We can use all these tools on our tool belts, just like these guys, except I just do it from the back of my horse. Um, but we, we also let people take selfies with the horses, pet the horses, ask questions. Um, one of the selling points that I tell people is, if I was driving through your neighborhood, what are the chances that you're going to come out and talk to me? Right? I'm going to be gone by the time you get to the street. Well, if I'm on my horse, you're probably going to be like, that's really cool. Like, I haven't seen a horse in the city ever and come outside and engage with us. So, and you can tell us what's going on in your neighborhood. Uh, if you have any problems going on or if you just want to say hi, that's fine too. So, kind of bridging that gap between the community and the police department. Um, like I said, we do a lot, a lot of public relations stuff. And then the other part of our duties, which is awesome, is crowd control. One horse could do the same amount of work as 12 to, 12 to 20 cops, depending on how animated that crowd is. So pretty cool if you think about it. And the simplistic thing to, um, of how that works is only one thing can occupy the same space. My horse is the smallest of the six we have. He's 1,200 pounds. 
Um, if he wants to stand where I'm standing right now, we just kind of play the nudge game where he leans into me and eventually I'm going to move because he's a lot bigger than me. So it works out great. Also with seeing over and when you have a crowd of people to see what's going on in the crowd, um, being able to hear what's going on and the elements of that situation as well. So uh, in my... Uh, personal life? Personal maybe? life. Um, Let's get into your personal life. All right. I do CrossFit. I drank that Kool-Aid. So CrossFit. CrossFit. Oh, okay. please tell me. You don't know what CrossFit no, is? No, I know what it is. Okay. <laughs> do you guys know what CrossFit is? Okay. So I stumbled upon that four years ago, and it's been great for me. It's a very great community of people that isn't cops, kind of like the transit guy had talked about, um, just to, that you detach from the world of law enforcement and don't lose your, your sense of self. So just being pushed physically and mentally, I love CrossFit. Um, I have a dog, a, mutt, a lab mutt at home, and I trained him to be a therapy dog. So we'll go to nursing homes and the children's hospital and stuff like that. I also have a naked cat. Um, she's kind of part monkey, part dog, so she keeps things entertaining, entertaining for me. Um, and I'm just super social. I love helping my friends with their house projects since I don't have one. Um, I like to mentor. I go to church. I read. Um, I have a motorcycle. I have a kayak. Just I like to keep busy and stay active. So, so let's just come back to horse patrol, mounted patrol. I don't know the right terminology. That's not uncommon around the country. Right? No, it's just, it's very expensive. So our, we get a discount on our board, for example, and our board is a little over 500 a month per horse. So a lot of cities look at that and they're like, oh my God, that's so much. Or if you look, we just got a new horse trailer, which is out there. So when you guys go out and see them, you'll see our, our new pride and joy. I want to say that was like $40,000. Um, however, at the same time, we do take care of our equipment. We don't need new squad cars every couple of years. The last trailer we had lasted us 23 years. Um, so that's one of the, um, I think the, the thing that you can't put a price on and you can't put a statistic on as for an admin person is, like I said, all the positive public relations we generate for the city. And does it tend to be bigger cities that have mounted patrol? Yep. Well, like I said, for, I know for Minnesota, it's Duluth, Minneapolis, and us. Okay. And they utilize their mounted patrols for different things. So Minneapolis, their mounted patrol is more used for bar closes, and their off most of their officers get overtime to do it. This is my regular 40-hour job. So. so if you like horses and you like CrossFit, you may find Oh, You don't have to do CrossFit. We'll just have more to talk about. Great. OK. Thanks, Jen. The legendary FBI. I don't think we even need to. Hello, can, I, can I tell about the picture? Sure. So if you ever saw the movie Goodfellas, that's Henry Hill, I guess, being escorted off to jail by the FBI. Hello, I'm Gene LaPlace. I'm a special agent with the FBI. I've been with the FBI for a total of 26 years. And of those 26 years, I've been a special agent. The first four years, I worked as a support employee. And that's one of the things that a lot of people don't think about the FBI is we have professional support employees that are intelligence analysts, um, financial accountants, forensic accountants, <clears throat> excuse me, um, computer scientists, we have uh, 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 photography specialists, we have so many different, we have auto mechanics actually that service our cars. Um, the main function that the FBI does is our main priority is preventing terrorism. So we have international terrorism squads, domestic terrorism squads, cyber squads, uh, we have several white-collar squads in the Minneapolis office that conduct uh, um, bank fraud, government fraud investigations, and human trafficking, which unfortunately has been a pretty big thing lately in the area here. In my day-to-day -day duties, I am the applicant coordinator for the Minneapolis division, which we cover three states, Minnesota, North, and South Dakota. So I basically go through applications, uh, conduct uh, interviews with our prospective employees, then recommend and move on in the process to our oral, oral interview and written exercise. Some of the things that a lot of people don't know about the FBI is that we, excuse me, you do not have to have a law enforcement degree or background to become an FBI agent. Matter of fact, most FBI agents do not have a law enforcement background. Uh, the most competitive skills right now for the FBI are cyber related degrees, engineering, accounting, finance, and law degrees, and then, um, then if you have a master's degree, that also helps you too. 
So you, you do need a college degree, but yeah. it doesn't have to be specifically law enforcement. Right, you need a four-year college degree and three years full-time professional work experience. And then if you have a master's degree, you only need two years full-time professional work experience. And actually, the most more work experience you have, the more competitive it would be in the process. So average age people apply is about 30. And you could really, for the FBI, work anywhere in the country or even abroad, correct? Right, yes. We have anywhere in the United States you can work, and we have offices, not as many as the DEA, but we have, I think, 46 throughout the whole world that you can go to. And with this job, you can travel the world and throughout the United States. Thanks, Gene. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, I, I saved this specifically for last is a typical patrol officer. Now, Risto is far above average and not typical, but um, one of the most common assignments, especially for a city police department, is patrol, which is the, the officers you see out in marked squad cars, uh, out in their, well, he'll tell you what they do. Um, this particular photo is just kind of a random picture of some of our patrol officers at a traffic crash. Interestingly, in this picture is a, a county deputy who is processing the, the evidence at the scene and a state trooper who I think is probably reconstructing the scene. So our patrol officers work with a lot of different agencies, but in Champlin and in most city police departments, over half of our employees work in the patrol division. And Risto is one of them. And as the chief said, I'm uh, Officer Risto Karanen. Um, I've been a cop for about uh, nine years. Uh, my career started down in Phoenix uh, for Phoenix PD. Uh, that's where I received all my training. At that time, I did not have a uh, college degree. I actually finished that afterwards. They don't require a degree uh, in Arizona. Um, I worked there for seven and a half years and the entire time was within the patrol uh, division uh, for the police department. Um, after that, we moved up to Minnesota. I grew up here, incidentally, I graduated from Champlin Park High School back in uh, 1998. Um, I guess the typical uh, duties uh, for a patrol officer um, for I guess the city of Champlin, city of Phoenix, pretty much anywhere, is um, we answer radio calls, uh, conduct uh, traffic enforcement. Uh, one thing that I, I really enjoy doing um, is uh, traffic enforcement, specifically uh, DWIs. Um, and I think my experience down in Phoenix, I, I, I went to a lot of, lot of wrecks down there, uh, a lot of very serious wrecks, fatal accidents, and um, at times, uh, impairment was a factor. And that kind of molded me into the, the officer that I am. So uh, that's really a passion for me. Uh, I guess personally for me, uh, I came from a family of 10. I've got five uh, kids of my own. Um, one thing that, we, that I really enjoy doing is traveling and uh, being outdoors with my, uh, well, I went hunting with my son for the first time. He's 10 years old. Um, so those are some of the things that I enjoy doing. Great, okay. So I think, um, as you can see, we've got a real wide variety of, of people who do these jobs, of agencies that they work for, of duties that they perform. And that was really what we wanted to illustrate here, is there's a lot of different opportunities within our profession. Um, and so I'm hopeful that if you're watching this video somewhere, or if you're in the audience, maybe there's someone up here you can identify with. You know, Risto, I happen to know, is, is very dedicated to his family. He's got a lot of kids. There's other people up here who are single and happy that way. And our profession is, it works for any of those situations, really. You don't have to be a specific type of person or from a specific mold. Um, any other comments, guys? This is a great panel. I appreciate everyone showing up. There's quite a bit more here than I thought there was going to be. So this is great. Yeah.